Even if you're just getting started in crypto, you've probably heard of stablecoins like USDC. Today we're breaking down what they are, why they matter, how to use them, and how you can make money with them. Welcome back to the DeFi 101 course. This course is made with support from the Solana Foundation and is designed to take you from a crypto investor to a crypto user. You can find a link to the full course playlist as well as supplementary written materials in the video description. Now let's get into it. First, what exactly are stablecoins? In short, stablecoins are cryptocurrencies that are equal to a fiat currency like the US dollar or the euro. In other words, the value is stable. Sound boring? Maybe if you're looking for the next 100x, but they've actually turned out to be a killer application of crypto and probably the crypto application that is used the most in the real world. As of the time we're recording this video, the total supply of stablecoins has grown to over $210 billion. And every single month, over $100 billion in peer-to-peer -peer transactions are made using stablecoins. These are largely people in the developing world using them to make purchases. For people in countries with high inflation, being able to permissionlessly access US dollars is perhaps the most important economic invention in history. But why do stablecoins need to exist when we have other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin? What problem do they solve? Stablecoins solve a key problem with cryptocurrencies. Normal cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Solana are amazing in many ways, but their prices change constantly. Imagine trying to buy a coffee with Sol, but by the time you get to the counter, the price has dropped. In fact, crypto is famously volatile, maybe one of the most volatile asset classes in the world. And this makes it great for investing and speculation, but less great for use as an actual currency. Or imagine trying to send money to family overseas, but not knowing how much they'll actually receive. Life is still denominated in fiat currency for better or worse. And that's where stablecoins come in. They're digital currencies that are designed to maintain a steady value, usually pegged to one US dollar, but occasionally to other currencies. Think of them as digital dollars that can move around the globe at close to the speed of light. But how do they actually work? Let's look at USDC as an example. Every USDC token is backed by real US dollars or dollar equivalents held in regulated bank accounts and other auditable places. When you want to have USD, you deposit real dollars, and when you want to cash out, you can always redeem one USDC for one USD. It's like having a digital claim on a real dollar. To buy USDC, one would simply swap an asset like dollars to get USDC. It's seamless, all the work is done behind the scenes, uh, or you can swap for USDC on a crypto exchange like Coinbase, or a decentralized exchange like Jupiter, wherever you'd like. And why is this such a big deal, right? We already have electronic payments. Because stablecoins actually have a ton of benefits. First, you get the stability of regular money, specifically the US dollar. Your USDC today will be worth the same tomorrow, next week, next month, and that's huge for anyone who is using the crypto economy but needs to plan ahead for regular payments. But you also get all the superpowers of crypto. So if you want to send $10,000 to someone in Japan at 3 a.m. on a Sunday, no problem. With traditional banks, that might take days or weeks and cost you a fortune in fees. With stablecoins, it happens in a few seconds and costs just a few cents. And you don't need to worry about banking hours, holidays, etc. Because crypto market never closes, it's running 24-7, 365 days a year. You can trade, send, or receive stablecoins whenever you need to, anytime, anywhere. Speaking of sending money globally, it's probably the biggest breakthrough with stablecoins, maybe all of crypto. Think of someone working abroad trying to send money home to their family. With traditional banks, they might lose 5-10% to in fees and wait days for a transfer. With stablecoins, they can send any amount for basically pocket change. In fact, crypto is actually eating heavily into traditional remittance platforms. Swapping for USDC or sending funds on Solana isn't free, but typically you're looking at a fraction of a cent to move any amount of money, even if it's thousands of dollars. Try doing that with a wire transfer. Getting started with stablecoins is easy. You can buy them directly on exchanges like Coinbase, swap other crypto for them using Jupiter. We cover this in the swapping video of this course. You can also receive them as payment from others. Many people do this if they want to be paid in crypto. And once you have stablecoins, there's a lot you can do with them. You can trade instantly without worrying about price swings. You can send money globally in seconds. You can earn yield by lending them out, which we cover in the video in this course about how to lend crypto. You can also use them as a safe haven during market volatility if you're a crypto investor or trader. There are, however, some risks associated with stablecoins. Let's talk about what could go wrong, because understanding the risks is just as important as understanding the benefits. First, there's something called peg risk. Remember how we said one USDC should always equal $1. Sometimes that peg can slip a little bit during market volatility. Usually that's tiny, think a tenth of a penny, but in extreme market conditions, it could slip more. 
It's like having a digital dollar that occasionally wobbles a tiny bit before stabilizing again. Occasionally, DPEGs have been more serious. In several cases in the past, people have tried to create stable coins that aren't backed by anything or that were backed by illiquid assets. In extreme cases, like UST, those stable coins have dropped over 99%. In less extreme examples, some small, untested stable coins have dropped 10% for extended period of times. In fact, in one case, USDC even dropped 10% when there were concerns related to the bank where they held money. Then there's smart contract risk. Stable coins live on blockchain technology, which means they use computer code to operate. This is especially true when you're using stable coins in an application like a lender protocol. While these systems are heavily tested and audited, there's always a small risk of technical problems with the code. Finally, there's the question of what's actually backing your stablecoins. This is why in this course we recommend sticking to reputable stablecoins like USDC, which is backed by real dollars or dollar equivalents in, in regulated banks and regularly audited. Some other stablecoins use different methods to back their value, which can be riskier. Here's how to play it safe. First, stick to well-known stablecoins from reputable companies. Second, don't keep all your money in one stablecoin. Third, be careful of new stablecoins promising crazy high returns. Usually that's compensating for risk. Remember, if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Millions of people use stablecoins every day without issues. Just like you'd be careful about which bank you use, being selective about which stablecoins you use goes a long way in managing those risks. That's stablecoins in a nutshell. They're the bridge between traditional money and crypto, making digital payments and trading accessible to everyone. Eventually, we'll probably call them digital dollars and maybe even simply dollars. Some people have predicted that the total stablecoin market cap could grow from $200 billion to trillions of dollars in the years ahead. Either way, now you know what they are, how they work, and how to use them. To learn more about new opportunities in the crypto market, you can check out our newsletter at newsletter.dynamodefi.com. Please like and subscribe to help us provide straightforward crypto education to more people. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.